Good day guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, we'll be talking about another very hot coin on the market currently, which is Ontology. Ontology released an airdrop on NEO about a month ago and since then it's received a lot of traction and its token price has basically bounced up to more than 3 times its value in just a month. But despite the hype and the trading volume of this coin, a lot of people are still asking and don't really understand what Ontology is all about because it's quite a complicated uh, project. Today, we will try to explain to you in simple terms who Ontology is, what they are trying to achieve, and how they plan to get there. And most importantly, we'll be looking at whether Ontology is a good investment at the current price or not. To learn more about Ontology, keep watching this video. Ontology describes itself as a new public multi-chain project and a distributed trust collaboration platform. Let me try to break this down for you. Currently, blockchain projects are very isolated. Each blockchain has its own unique terminology and technology, and this technology is often not compatible with other blockchains. More importantly, it is not compatible with legacy systems. Legacy systems are current systems that the world uses. Example, the business world operation uses SAP or ERP programs. Financial systems would use a legacy system like SWIFT, etc. Blockchain projects have great technology, example decentralization, open ledger, etc. But outside companies cannot take advantage of their tech because the software is simply not compatible. This is one of the biggest barriers to mass adoptions of blockchain currently. There are several upcoming blockchain projects that are called cross-chain projects, example Icon OneChain, and they aim to build a bridge or be the middleman between blockchain projects and other blockchain projects or blockchain projects and the real-world business legacy systems. The way each cross-chain project aims to bridge the gap is slightly different. For example, one chain offers various financial and data services to help to connect various industries to be the middleman by offering services. Whereas Icon writes smart contracts for smart contracts to create custom-made dApps for each uh, needed use. We have done detailed reviews of both of these projects. Feel free to check them out should you wish. Ontology's approach to bridging the gap though is rather unique, fundamental and clever. Let me explain it in more detail. Ontology goes back to the root of the problem. So before even offering to be the middleman, Ontology asks the question, why do you even need a middleman? And the answer is trust or rather the lack of trust. For example, if I am running a company and I'm going into business with another company, I would want to hire a lawyer to draw up a contract. And the reason for that complicated contract that requires a lawyer's help to do is because I am afraid that the other company may bail on me or let me down. In other words, there is a lack of trust between me and the other company and I need something, a contract to protect me. But if I could trust the other party the way I trust my brother or my wife, I wouldn't need a contract because I don't have a contract when I ask my wife or my brother to do something for me because I trust them. In other words, if we have trust, it would save a lot of time and money and completely simplify transactions. Ontology aims to use the trustworthy, unhackable, open nature of the blockchain to create a digital ID that all parties and systems can trust. In doing so, they hope to introduce trust into the market and create transactions or communications between two parties that are cheap and efficient. Think about it this way. If the core business of Bitcoin is about digital currency, then the core business of ontology is actually digital ID. The ONT ID will be like a digital passport that will open avenues for access to have communications with various other parties because they can now trust each other. In fact, the actual ID, the ONT ID that ontology hopes to create is even better and more reliable than a passport. So for example, where a passport only has your travel history, the user's unique digital ID, the ONT ID, could have your financial history plus your driver's history plus your um, travel history, your criminal record, your personal information like your spouse, etc. is potentially an all-in-one ID. 
The best part about this ID is that users like you and me will have full control of our data. So not everyone in every interaction will have access to all my information. So for example, if I'm interacting with a banker through ontology, the banker only needs to know my financial history and ontology will only release my financial history to him. If I'm interacting with a real estate agent, ontology will only release my real estate history to the third party. So ontology doesn't just create the ID for us, it also manages the ID for the user. Furthermore, the transaction that you take through the blockchain through ontology, you may not even need to reveal your personal details, like your name, because your personal ID is everything that matters. It's like a driver's license. So imagine if I was a traffic cop and I put you over for speeding, your name John Smith doesn't mean any thing to me is too generic a name too many people are called john smith but your driver's license number means a lot to me because it is specific to you and it can give me access to your entire driving history in the same way in the transactions that occur through ontology a blockchain project the other party will be more interested in your aunt id than the reputation and of your id rather than your specific name so you could potentially borrow a loan or take part in a project using only your id and not even your name now the scope of ontology is massive and this is where it's going to start getting mind-blowing the id that ontology is creating isn't just for people they also want to create id for blockchain projects they want to create ids for circular businesses they want to create ids for applications as well as api apis are basically an app for an app so if uber was your application on uber you have various features like a gps feature or a credit card payment features each of these separate features are called api so apis are apps for apps and uh, ontology wants to create an id for both the apps as well as the apis and ontology will give each of them a reputation system so for example if i was a dep creator and i wanted to create an app if i have to choose a gps feature or a gps api to implement into my app i can literally look at all the gps feature apis that are out there and pick the one with the best reputation besides apps ontology will also do ids for people which we know objects as well as data the field of society that ontology hopes to impact is basically everything. They hope to impact public welfare, financial services, healthcare, government administration, insurance, internet of things, asset management, copyright protection. So basically every aspect of society. So just stop here for a moment and try and capture the scope of this project. This is a project that is trying to build the world's biggest library of identification for basically everything physical and digital from literally every source possible to penetrate every aspect of society. If they achieve this, okay, they will become one of the world's biggest companies, not just the blockchain's biggest companies, but the world's biggest companies. Government, big businesses like Google and Facebook are going to want to use them. We're talking about world level kind of market cap. I'm not the only one who thinks this way. One of the most quoted articles on ontology currently is an article from Coindesk, and they also state that companies like Facebook will, ab will be able to easily plug into ontology for trust. So we are really talking about one of the most ambitious projects in the blockchain space at the moment. Now, even if identity is established between two parties, there will still be times that you will need to provide some technical help to help both parties to communicate with each other. And this is where ontology becomes special again. Ontology is offering a plug and play approach where circular companies can use their tech without even being aware that they are using blockchain. And this is unheard of because at the moment, if a company wants to have the blockchain advantages in its uh, software, it basically has to do an overhaul of the entire software to change their software from whatever uh, legacy system they were using, basically do an entire overhaul to make it into a blockchain um, software but here ontology is promising them a plug and play a very simple approach where your ground person will not even be aware that you're using blockchain behind the scenes how is this possible it's possible because of the identity system they have okay consider this if i didn't have the digital id already established then to ensure safe and secure transactions between two parties 
I will have to write a program that has like 10 layers of smart contracts to ensure that that transaction is super safe, super fair to both parties and also unhackable. But if I already have a library of unhackable trustworthy ID available, then to help each party to access the blockchain or this pool of IDs, all I really have to do is just write a simple app or API that will allow them to access my library. So I'm not actually writing a contract for both of them to communicate with each other. I'm writing a simple API for them to connect into my big library of IDs. That's all. So if you are a real estate agent, I will just have to write an app that allows you to add access the real estate profiles in my library. That's all. I'm not actually playing lawyer and writing a complicated contract. I'm just helping you to access my library. That's all. It's so much easier than writing a new and heavy contract for every single transaction. This is why it makes it so easy for companies to access the advantages of the blockchain without having to do major overhauls to their company's software. It's a very smart concept. Now this analogy I've just given you is an oversimplified explanation of how they are doing it. The technical details is a lot more complicated and you can go into their white paper to learn more. But hopefully this example gives you an idea of how they are potentially penetrating into the market, the ease of which they are allowing mass adoption of their technology. Now, like many cross-chain projects, Ontology is a platform, meaning they themselves will build a few dApps to help to play the middleman role initially, but they are really open to other developers to jump on board and build even more apps that they can uh, build, the users can build to play the middleman role. And if the apps that new developers write or create are used, the developers will get paid according to how much their apps are used. Now, ontology tokens uh, will be used for every transaction on the platform. So that's how the ontology project earns money. And the ontology tokens that are earned will be used to pay for the upkeeping of the projects, including paying for the individual developers and the use of their debt. So it's basically a self-sustaining system. Some of the debts that they have already built to aid or access the use onto uh, as the middleman software include a distributed trust system, uh, distributed ledger tech, which is basically a decentralized storage of information on the blockchain. Okay, it's just a fancy way of saying it, as well as a distributed data exchange, etc. Now, when we talk about their reputation system, a lot of blockchain projects already have what is called a reputation system. Okay, um, but just as a hypothetical example, I'm just going to use Neo. If Neo had a reputation system, what it means at the moment in terms of blockchain world is that um, as a system, NEO will measure how good a business or a person functions on the NEO based on their past transaction records on the blockchain, whether they uh, were efficient and lived up to, and to their promise, whether they were honest. Based on all their actions, they will create for them a reputation. But the reputation that is created is created on the blockchain within the blockchain and is also created for use within the blockchain. Ontology, however, is creating a distributed reputation system, meaning it's collecting data not only from within the transactions of within the blockchain, it's also con um, consolidating or collecting information from different sources outside the blockchain. On this model, which they hope to achieve, they are promising to collect information even from government organ uh, agencies like the police, the banks, the tech office, utilities, etc. Now, obviously, these sources are not available to them yet, but this is the scope of what they want to achieve. So, as I said, they're a very ambitious project. If they do manage to achieve this level of um, information consolidation, they will literally become the possibly the world's biggest library of personal information. They also aim to have a multi-source identity system for people, meaning, as I said before, collecting information about individuals from various sources. And the same is multi-source identity system from objects, which is the same, that means collecting information from different sources, but for objects. The only thing I will add here is that I foresee this actually becoming very achievable for objects. And this is because the Internet of Things is a... Uh, new technology on the internet that we expect to see mass adoption over the next two to five years. 
Internet of Things is a separate technology from blockchain. Right? Internet of Things is basically the new internet movement where electronic objects will communicate with each other. So for example, you might be driving home, but your car as an electronic device would already communicate with your home electronic devices to turn on the lights and the aircon and the music for you just as you reach home. So the Internet of Things communication will basically be a multi-source identification system for objects that ontology is hoping to achieve. So so in terms of creating a multi-source identity system for objects, this goal of ontology I don't think is too far-fetched, it's not science fiction, it's already something that is happening and will probably adopt, uh, have mass adoption in the next two to five years. The consensus algorithm they use is also very interesting and novel. It's a new consensus algorithm that is known as the Ontoran Consensus Engine or OCE. OCE in simple terms is basically an efficient and improved version of what we know as the Delegated Byzantine Fault Tolerance or the DBFT Consensus Protocol, which for those who are familiar with NEO, that's actually NEO's consensus algorithm. So they are uh, having an upgraded version of NEO's consensus algorithm. Besides being very stable and reliable, uh, which is what DBFT has been for NEO, OCE is boasting, okay, listen to this, is boasting to have near infinite scalability, wow, and requires a relatively low hashing rate, making it uh, more unlikely to have forks in the future. So this is very big boast, you know, saying that you are going to have near infinite scalability is basically like saying you're going to be the perfect consensus algorithm out there. So we will have to see whether they can deliver on this tag. But the rumors are that if OCE does take off, even NEO is considering upgrading to OCE as well. Now at this point, I need to talk to you as well about the relationship between NEO and ontology. Now, Ontology had an airdrop from NEO we mentioned ago, uh, um, about a month ago, and it's also a platform, just like NEO is a platform. So a lot of people are confused as to whether these two projects are friendly towards each other or whether they are competing with one another. The CEO of NEO is a guy called Da Hongfei, and Da Hongfei is actually the CEO of a company called OnChain. OnChain is the parent company for both Ontology and NEO. So straight off the bat, you can say that um, Ontology and NEO are not designed to compete with each other, but to complement or help each other. Because why would a parent company create two competing products? It doesn't make sense. Now, Da Hongfei is the CEO of OnChain as well as NEO, but he is not the CEO of Ontology. The CEO of Ontology is a guy by the name of Jun Li, and we'll cover him later when we look at the team's resume. The question a lot of people also ask is, if Ontology is not competing with NEO, why doesn't Ontology just build itself on NEO? Wouldn't that benefit the NEO um, economy? The, the reason why Ontology cannot be built on NEO is really because of the scope of the project. Ontology's scope is massive. Its global scale is bigger than NEO's scope. Okay? Ontology has to be a separate blockchain because of that. Now, NEO has NEO ID, but NEO ID, as we mentioned before, is data that is collected from the um, transactions within the NEO blockchain and NEO ID is really uh, designed to be applied only to projects on the NEO blockchain. But Ontology has to collect information from outside of NEO. NEO ID will be one of its sources, but it's only one of the many sources that Ontology is aiming to collect from. Also, people will want to know that they are going to store their information on a blockchain that is specialized just for the purpose of what Ontology is um, trying to do and not have their information stored on the NEO blockchain. Also for the scope of Ontology's project, it actually needs to be more scalable than even NEO and task the new consensus algorithm, the Ontoran consensus engine. Ontology's blockchain projects have a lot more independence and flexibility than NEO, which actually makes it better for interoperability, which is the main selling point of Ontology, is interoperability. And finally, on NEO, the middleman tag, if it was to have a middleman tag, would be smart contract based, because that's just how NEO is built. It's built around smart contracts. But Ontology, as we mentioned above, can communicate with traditional IT sims using simple APIs that are not necessarily smart contract based. So for these reasons, Ontology needs to be independent from NEO. However, Ontology and NEO can be partners and they are built by the same parent company, so they most likely will be partners. 
If Neo, for example, has a bank digital service, Ontology can be the link to link that project up with other banks in the real world. If Ontology was to need smart contract help for any reason, example, if it has a new project is being built on its uh, platform and the new project wants to run an ICO token sale that is always or best run by smart contracts, Neo here is then the smart contract specialist or big brother who can help to provide the token sale system and write it all up in smart contracts. So they are potentially complementing each other. Now, the token use of an ontology is not really clear at this point. It is expected that in the near future, there will be a second token used in the project. So just as NEO project has both NEO and gas currencies, ontology is most likely going to have a second token besides ontology for with a different function in the near future. This is a lot of speculation and rumors about what this is going to be and how it's going to work out at the moment. But it's probably best to keep your eye out for an official announcement when it does happen. This is the team for Ontology and as you can see it's a very big team but it's also a very well balanced team with many engineers but also many other um, uh, posts, example, uh, many other um, roles, example marketing manager, director of policy and legal affairs, business manager, etc. Some of their top names are the following. Their founder is Jun Li. And he's a man with a very rich academic background, including uh, computer science, masters in communication engineering, and MBA and PMP. He has over 16 years of experience in IT and fintech, and he previously provided technical architecture management and planning support for top international IT firms and major Chinese financial exchanges. He has also taken part in architecture design and technical management of many major systems and has built up to multiple technical teams and systems from scratch. He also has a profound knowledge of the financial industry, ex excelling at internal management and external communication. The CSO or Chief Strategy Officer is NDG. Um, this guy has substantial experience in blockchain technology, including being a leader of one of the top 500 blockchain groups, Deputy General Manager of Wanda Technology, Deputy Secretary General of China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, Blockchain Technology and Industrial Development Forum. What? A director of Hyperledger. Wow. A member of China's delegation of ISO and deputy director of the China Blockchain Ecosystem Alliance. Ji has also participated in China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology Blockchain's White Paper, as well as blockchain standards related work. He's written several books on blockchain, including a blockchain development textbook and led many blockchain community events. What? This guy should be 80 years old with a beard and a professor title. He looks way too young. And the third is Ning Hu, who is their senior protocol architect. So he's one of the first semantic web professionals in China. His experience includes enterprise resource planning. So uh, this is ERP. So this is one of the legacy systems we talk about. Digitization of government affairs, gaming platforms, and media streaming. In 2008, he joined Project Hao, um, co-founder uh, which was initiated by Paul Allen, the co-founder of Microsoft, where his contributions included big data, artificial intelligence, and work related to semantic web. In 2013, he took part in setting up the Chinese division for Green Dot. So he has a rich understanding in banking, finance, and prepaid card services. So this is a very legit company. You can go through all their resumes. All their resumes are solid. Okay, These are people who have a lot of experience in their field and are basically uh, very successful and experts in what they do. So no advisors listed on their website as such, but we know that they are under the umbrella of on-chain who will obviously provide more than sufficient insight or oversight. And Da Hongfei, who is one of the uh, CEO of the top 10 blockchain projects is already uh, on board in terms of the on-chain advisor list. They have quite a few partners. Most of them are Chinese companies I don't recognize, but Danhua Capital I do recognize. And Danhua Capital is actually a huge venture capital company that invests in very promising early companies. So not just blockchain, but also artificial intelligence, enterprise software, etc. So the fact that they have chosen to add ontology onto their portfolio is very reassuring really as a potential investor. 
This is their roadmap. They only just released a roadmap two days ago, and it's a very busy roadmap as you can see. It starts now in the second quarter of 2018, and it's basically split up into two main streams for update, their chain network as well as their ecosystems. Some of the updates coming up this quarter include their mainnet launch as well as the ONT ID framework release. So it's going to be an exciting quarter. Uh, good for price point and price action, I guess. And their homogeneous chain network Socrates phase is only due in the next quarter, third quarter, and planned to be completed only in 2019. It's only in 2020 that they expect to embrace the next generation internet and their ecosystem roadmap similarly is also in 2020 that they aim to become a top global trust collaboration platform. So it's a very realistic time frame. They're not rushing things and for anyone who is investing now, you know, whether you got in at $1 or $4, the truth is with a roadmap like that, you're probably still very early in the game. The project hasn't even really begun yet. And it's only ends in development. So its development only ends in 2020. So there's a lot of room for growth in this project. Now, some food for thought about the project on the whole before we finish up. And this is not criticism of the project. This is just some uh, points for consideration that I have for myself, and I'm thinking aloud as a potential investor. One of the reasons why a lot of investors look for blockchain projects that have a working product to invest in is because more than 70% of the promised projects currently have failed or have yet to deliver a working product. It's one thing to have a nice concept, but increasingly blockchain companies and investors are realizing that it's actually harder to get the concept out into an actual product. Many roadmaps are getting delayed by the long top but the long time frames and even top projects in the top 20 are struggling to deliver on their promises so for these reasons a lot of investors are looking to invest only in projects that have a working product ontology as a project is very promising okay they are promising a lot of things they are promising to be able to build a database of information from sources that include government agencies and banks and tax offices but do you really have the faith to believe that any government is willing to release that kind of information to a decentralized blockchain project where the information can be used in other countries? And currently, the attitude of governments across the world, especially the major governments, seem more intent to regulate blockchain, to control blockchain, rather than to aid it to decentralize its information. Ontology is also promising a new consensus algorithm with near infinity scalability. That's a huge claim. You know, the scope of this whole project in itself is massive. And they are basically setting themselves up or promising themselves to be one of the biggest companies in the world, not just the blockchain market. Um, they're going to need a lot of partnerships to pull that off. And as an investor, it can be too good to be true. You know, it almost sounds too good to be true. So you gotta have a lot of faith to believe that this team can carry it off. And the team is a solid team. They do have um, solid backing with OnChain and Neo as a very close uh, relations to them. But as an investor, again, you know, you gotta ask yourself: Can you believe in this team? I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't just blindly look at the concept they offer and invest in any concept from any blockchain project. But you gotta look at the team and look at the whole um, blockchain project holistically and decide for yourself whether or not you can have faith that they can deliver what they are promising. And in this case, it's a stretch of faith because Ontology is really promising um, something mind-blowingly big. Again, this is not dishing the project. I really like this project. It's just a consideration I have. The only other food for thought I have about the project is about the centralizing of information. A lot of people who use blockchain currently use it because we don't like how big organizations are monopolizing the market. Uh, there are big giants who are monopolizing the social media marketing, uh, uh, the advertising, the finance industries, etc. So big organizations will hog the giant share of the market and make themselves indispensable. And that is exactly what Ontology is trying to do in the ID market. It's trying to establish a centralized identity information on one place, which is the Ontology network, and make it easy for other agencies to access it. 
Of course, okay, ontology is much better than Google or Facebook, who basically use unseen means to extract and collate our personal information. Ontology doesn't do it um, secretly, it does it openly. And also, they don't store our information on a centralized cloud storage. They are storing our information on a decentralized blockchain, which is the most secure um, way of storing information that we currently know of in today's world. But despite being a decentralized method, okay, it is nonetheless still a one-point source of information. So it's basically still setting itself up to be a centralized point of view for ID information. There are rumored methods of hacking into blockchain, including the use of quantum computers. This is a massive concern for all blockchain projects. And if quantum computers can decrypt and hack into blockchain projects, then potentially ontology as a single one point source of all our ID information collected from even government sources, okay, is, is basically setting itself up as a one stop shop for hackers to get all our information. Hacking aside, you know, having all the information that ontology wants to have places ontology in a very powerful position. Of course, I would trust a blockchain company like ontology any day to have my information rather than a centralized mega company who is collecting my data through unseen processes like Facebook and more than that, trading them off to other people. But many people are already speculating that Facebook or Google could be a potential customer of ontology in the future. We believe in the team that is running it now, but what if many years from now the team members change? Or what if the whole project comes under a different leadership? Or what if a mega government like China or US demands the project to release the information over to them? What will happen then? Do you still believe that all your information will always be kept safe with one company? Do you really have the faith to believe that nothing will ever go wrong? So again, I don't know the answer to this, right? But this is something that uh, I think everyone who's jumping onto this project should uh, has to consider for his for his or herself. From a price prediction point of view, currently the project is sitting at four dollars and fifty four cents with a market cap of just over a billion dollars, right? Um, this is a very huge market cap for a very young project. Over the past few weeks, the project has received some pumps which even the community themselves have not been able to satisfactorily explain. Now, is Ontology a product that is worth $1 billion at this point in time or is it all hype? In all fairness, at this point, there probably is a lot of hype behind this price point. It probably is a bit overbought. but does that matter? Um, maybe not, because even EOS in its ICO phase with no working products for the last quarter has managed to secure a multi-billion dollar market cap and EOS sits comfortably in the top 10 without a working product yet. It's, it's proving itself to be a good product that's going to come out soon, but it really has no working product, but it's still um, very popular because of the promised uh, product that's coming out. So Ontology very well might have the same success that EOS has. In the very short history of ontology with just five weeks on the market, it hasn't really developed any well-established support or resistance lines yet. Although some people might argue that the short plateaus at $2.10 to $2.30 or $4.10 to $4.30 might be developing resistance or support lines, but really no one knows for sure. If you look at uh, trend, uh, sorry, trading analysis, some of the RSI markers indicate that it's overbought, which means if you believe in those markers, you know, there's potentially going to be a crash where people will start selling. But, you know, really, okay, the whole the, the overbought RSI is really the same for the whole crypto market at the moment, not just ontology. And anyway, crypto projects are ontology defy technical analysis anyway. The main question I'm going to ask myself as a potential investor is do I think that this is a project that can achieve what it is promising? Because if I can believe it, I will invest in it because it's hated to be one of the biggest companies in the world. In that case, $1 or $4, even $6 would be good entry points because the worth of this company is going to just go to the moon. If I can't believe that it will deliver though, okay, rather than not investing at all, I need to ask myself whether I want to invest a little bit still. Because even if I'm skeptical that they can deliver what they promise, in the very, very small chance that they might be able to deliver, I need to ask myself, can I miss out on such an opportunity? Obviously, if I'm skeptical, I'm not going to put a lot of money into it, but I might still put a small token amount simply because of the small chance of success that they might have. 
Now at this point, I want to be honest, I have not bought any ontology tokens yet. I'm still deciding. Some people will laugh at me and say, you're missing out, you're taking too long and the price is going to keep going up. Again, I'm not worried if it does because if I do decide to believe in this project, I am believing in a price point much higher than the current fluctuations. And I'd rather be slow and sure anyway than rush in only to regret. Crypto investments are high risk investments. So my recommendation is always take your time to know a project and decide carefully on your investments. After all, it is your own hard earned money that you are investing. Never be pressured into making a decision, whether it's by peers or market FOMO. And if you do miss one golden opportunity, don't worry about it. Because the way I think of it, if I miss one golden opportunity, it just means I have more money to invest into the next golden opportunity. As always, I'm not a professional and this is not professional advice. So always do your own research and make your own decisions. So that's it, guys. That's all my thoughts on ontology. This is a very ambitious project that I do like. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this video and the information, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our future reviews. Also, make sure you join us on our very new Telegram group chat where the whole community, not just me, are giving each other important market updates that will never make it to the videos. A couple of recent examples of the updates on our chat include the announcements of the Icon token swap as well as Binance coin burns. So do check out our Telegram link if you are interested in that. Alrighty guys, until next time, take care and goodbye.